What's going on, beautiful people? And welcome to another installment to the Thrive 360 Podcast. Joined with me always, Dr. Paul. But we got a special, special, special guest. My bishop, Dr. Jesse. Get it. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get right into it. I think we got a great topic today. I know that you wanted to start us off with a question. And normally, I'm the guy that starts off with a question. But uh, today, you turn into the interviewer for the moment. <laughs> no, I'm grateful that um, Bishop is here with us, my bonafide friend. You know, yes. we, said, we said friends for life. But in ministry, one thing I realized and noticed after 30 years of coaching, counseling people, serving ministry, my estimation or guess mm -hmm. is that of all the counseling, which is maybe thousands of hours by now, about maybe half or more of the issues that we would deal with are related to directly or indirectly to people's finances. Yes. And so what I wanted to know is, what has your experience been in counseling people for all of these years how much of the counseling you find that has something or, you know, connected their finances in some way? Wow. And, and like you said, you said at least half. And, yeah. you know, I would dare to say that I think many times it's even more. Wow. I really believe that God has had both of us in this area for quite some time. There's a, a theme and a thought mm -hmm. that I just believe is prevalent for this topic. And that thought that comes to me is really the victory, the breakthrough and the overcoming in this financial realm, as you know, yes. is to me, it's the last frontier, right? It's the last frontier from second Corinthians chapter eight, where the scripture says, as you excel in so many things, yes. you have faith, you have great preachers, right? You have love, you have this, he says, see that you excel in this grace also. Yes. And he's speaking of the special gift and grace of being able to be givers and have generosity, the yes. generosity and yes. have the victory over this realm of finances. And I think that it's one of the last things that not just the church, right. but that we as preachers must get victory and overcome. It's just so prevalent. I would share to say it's even greater than that right. because from pastors and the lead families to the church, to the leaders, yes. Almost 80 to 90 percent of all counseling, almost. Wow. Even problems when it comes to the marriages and dealing with all of these things, it and, relates to And money. that's the way to ask about is like when you think about money impacting different areas of people's lives, you know, so I'd always mention that sometimes people come to you for anxiety, but then when you get into the conversation, the issue is really their financial instability. Yes. What are some of the other areas of people's life that is, that's affected by their finances? Wow, and uh, wow, that's an incredible question because the reality is, here's, here's the truth, is the marriages are affected by it. Mm -hmm. We know a great percentage of marriages that are in divorce, it's because of financial stress and pressure. Right. The anxiety is caused because of the financial lacks, insufficiencies. Right. We know that it affects the peace mm. that we have as people. It'll keep us in perfect peace, but it's difficult to have peace when every week, every month, every payday, right. it's the stress and the pressure. So I would say our faith is affected by it. Right. I would say our peace is affected by it. Our marriage wow. is affected by it. I would even say our obedience right. to God is affected by it. I would even go on to say our intimacy and our sexual life when there's so much pressures and all you of really that. You really can't take care of your spouse You properly. can't really take care of your spouse yeah, 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 yeah. So I don't know if there's, if you line up 10 areas, I believe right. nine of them right. would be affected by the financial world of life. Wow. The, one of the themes, why we call this Thrive 360 mm -hmm. is because it's a 360 degree. Yeah, it's it's it surrounds our entire life. Yeah, and it, the idea is taken from and you preach it so well too. Third John chapter one verse two. Yes, that says, "Beloved, I desire that you would prosper yeah. in all things, in all things, and yeah. be in health, yeah. even as your soul prospers." And that idea of prospering is thriving, yes. is doing better, is growing, yeah. um, and flourishing. And so the idea of thrive three hundred and sixty really is that we will flourish, we will get better, we will grow, experience God's grace in every area of our life. Yes. Both in terms of our finances, you know, in terms of our health, in terms of our relationships, in mm -hmm. terms of our outlook, in terms of our journey. All of these areas, 
allow us to thrive. Yes. And here is a, the amazing part about it too, is that every area impacts every other area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in the same way, mm -hmm. our financial stability or not impacts our faith, our faith impacts our financial ability. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I mean, all of it yes. is interrelated. And so we're talking about 360, but just like you said, mm -hmm. I've come to realize that over the years, I know for me, in terms of teaching, preaching, helping mm -hmm. people, the last frontier, one year that I have not spent a lot of time in over the 30 years. I've spent a lot of time on missions, on evangelism, on your mm -hmm. faith, on discipleship, on you know, your marriage, on yeah. family, healing, and supernatural, healing, supernatural yeah. gifts of the spirit, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But one area I know I've been deficient in teaching on, mm -hmm. even though I may counsel on it, is this area of finances. So that's why even for Thrive 360, we're starting there because I'm, I'm making up some years of not teaching on this, yes. as it were, and then we'll complete the 360. But even though we're starting with money, Thrive 360 is not only about money. Right. It's about the 360. Yes. But we're making sure to deal with this piece mm -hmm. at this time. Yes. Because like you, all, like you said prophetically, it is the last frontier. It is an essential frontier. section for it. And so that's, mm -hmm. that's kind of why I'm, I'm yeah. doing it. So, and I love it. I didn't even yes. think about it. But as you're talking about Thrive, which is prosper, yes. which is God's desire, in every way, in everything, in, right. in your faith and family and finances, and everything, yes. and every single thing that we would thrive, that yes. we would prosper, advance, and succeed. Right. But to me, that that's what God's been dealing with me with. I call it whole life prosperity, prosperity. Yes. or Love 360 it. prosperity, right. or prosperity in completeness and yes. totality and completing the full circle. Yes. And that's, I, I didn't even realize that I was coming to Thrive 360. Right, 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 right. 360 prosperity and yes. prosperity yes. has all the way around. But it's so apropos and it's what the Lord has said. And I have not dealt with it for 30 years I've been in ministry. I've not dealt with it to this measure, but I feel oppressed that this is the time. That this is the time yeah. and we must bring this and this is going to affect the kingdom of God, the yes. body of Christ, yes. families, mm -hmm. our children, yes. our children, and future gen. I have no doubt about that. Yeah. That is going to affect in an incredible way because there is a push. Right. I think when we speak in these de declarations, right, there's this wave that is coming. Mm -hmm. How can we participate in this wave? Like, how do we not miss the move of God in this wave? You get what I'm saying? Yes. So, how how do I get started in that? If like okay, cool. He just he just spoke. God is God is just wanting to do a thing in the body of Christ. How do I become a part of this wave? I'll kick off and then Bishop can give the you know the extra juice on it. Um, <laughs> but in in that same text in Third John chapter one, which is only one chapter, verse two says, "I desire that this is your portion that you right. prosper and everything." If you go down to verse four, it says that I am delighted when my children walk in truth. Mm -hmm. And therefore, what we have to do if we're going to participate in this wave is engage in and study and understand God's truth okay. in this area. And I'll go one step further, is to apply God's truth in this area. So last week I was in Jamaica doing a financial empowerment Thrive 360 seminar. And different questions came up. And one of the things that a scripture that they don't normally apply in this way, we would apply to our finances. So people are talking about, you know, the Bible talks about the, the uncertainty of wealth. Yes. But in the Proverbs, because we're going through all the wisdom texts on, on finances, the Proverbs says, give careful attention to your sheep. Watch over your flocks. And the second line of it says, because wealth doesn't last forever. Mm -hmm. And the principle there is, don't take for granted the thing that's producing wealth for you. Because if you don't pay attention to it, it can be gone tomorrow. Yeah, and I agree 100%. And what my thought was is how the scripture says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. One yes. translation says, my people's lives are failing yes. for lack of knowledge. But here's the emphasis of the text, because thou hast rejected it. 
And so as there is a press in the spirit of God yes. to get information, to yes. empower, to instruct, to inspire, right. how you get in on it is don't ignore it. Right. Don't reject. <laughs> don't throw off. Right. Don't yeah. don't be, basically said, don't cast your pearl before swine. Right. Don't be the swine. Right. When you hear truth, when you hear knowledge, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you shall free. Set you free. Yes. So we yeah. cannot deny this is truth. Yes. And now... It's 360. Yes. It's not just the tithe and the offering, the trust God and your giving. It's let's deal with your management right. of the other 90. Right. Because now anything that you pay attention to, mm. you say it automatically improves. Yeah. So because now we're putting effort, time, books, instruction, yes. conferences, everyone that will pay attention it's a prince. Their life is it's about to be proven in grace. Yes. Now, somebody walks out of there and say, ah, I don't believe that. Right. I, I don't believe that for me. Well, somebody's going to believe it. Right. Somebody's life's going to improve. Somebody's life is going to change. But we can't reject the truth that God is bringing at this season because it's going around the country. Yes. We can't reject it. Yeah. Like as you guys are talking and we talk about, again, the, the whole circle, yes. the circumference of Thrive 360. And how you guys said, you guys have been in ministry for quite some time, but the pressing is now yes. for a mm -hmm. God's people. We need to be set free and have a paradigm shift in the area of our finances, right? And I'm also thinking about people who are watching who may not be saved as well. I think of how Jesus, when he took the two fish and the five loaves, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. he met the practical need first before the spiritual need. So now that I've fed you, who cool, let me feed you. So what about, this is my question is, what about the people or the sheep who are not of this fold yet, who again, they, they may be broke, they need a paradigm shift, but the, I need this need, man, for, I, need, I need some money in my hand, I need to show, well, God, where's my gift? How do I produce this wealth? But I may not be a part of the, the kingdom yet. So I know we talk about this balance. So where do we start for them? So, okay, I'll give you a couple of responses to that. Mm -hmm. uh, firstly, I mean, we've done some of these seminars and stuff in the school district, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And that applies to everybody. Because there's some principles from the text, some wisdom from the text, that if any human being applies the wisdom from the scripture, mm -hmm. it would work for them. So that's number one. However, number two, the, the, the theme text of all what we do here in that third John says, mm -hmm. you know, that you're, you prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. And Jesus said, hey, listen, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things, these material things will be added to you as well. So therefore, for anybody who is listening, I can teach them principles of how to manage your money. And, yes. you know, and yes. there's, there's a plethora of ways they can get access to that. However, if they would seek first the kingdom, First things first, God was you now going to bring a different level of favor, grace, and strength and give them provision beyond what they can do humanly, if you understand what I'm saying. So even though we may help people who are not of the kingdom, yes, their kingdom step is still the most important step. Right. The principles of God work no matter who's used to That's exactly right. Absolutely. That's so exactly now, right. what are some ways that we can discover our wealth producing asset. So like we talked about with you, your story, how you discovered Shake and Bake. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, y'all thought I forgot about that. Y'all, he, he didn't tell you the story he how he discovered Shake no, and Bake. No, no, no. He didn't, he didn't no. tell you? It's when we did breadcrumbs as kids and oh, sold breadcrumbs. Okay. He says, we discovered Shake and Bake. We, we That's what we grew up on, Shake and Bake. Shake and yeah. Bake. Yeah. But he said, <laughs> I we quote, see, we got to we gotta run the tape back. He said it was his idea. So Shake and Bake, y'all need to give him his money and stop playing. I'm not going to hold that down until y'all give him <laughs> his money. Now, for you, Bishop. <laughs> Sir. How did you go about discovering your wealth-producing asset? It was... As Paul just said a moment ago, mm -hmm. growing up in Los Angeles, really in Compton, California, as I said, let him know. living in Compton, California, CA. I got to give my shout out to, <laughs> to, 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 the to, yeah, to the Compton crew. <laughs> but I had no idea any potential purpose, even any passion 
I just wanted to get out of my familiar environment, join the military, and through the military, I came into an experience with the Lord. From my experience with the Lord, immediately purpose began to be birthed in me. Purpose began to be birthed. Jeremiah 1 says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew you and ordained you to be. Once I discovered who I was called to be, immediately the grace to empower, inspire, motivate, transform lives began to just come out of my life even before I ever went into ministry. And although I've been in ministry almost got right at 30 years now, yes, but before when I discovered it, I began to recognize that that my God-given gift, my talent, we call it motivational gifts, special mm -hmm. gifts that we've been given from the Lord is, and that's my ability to teach, lead, mentor, motivate, coach, is my greatest asset mm -hmm. that God now has birthed. And you've seen it all around. Now we have professional coaching. Now we have mentoring. Now we have conferences. Right, now right, we have right. this. And then God now uses that influence. Some is in technology. You look at, you know, from a from a Microsoft or all these other people. Right. Some are in, you know, services and delivery, Amazon. Mm -hmm. But once a person finds mm -hmm. what their gift is, I call it a grace gift, mm -hmm. from God. And everybody has it from the moment. You look at a a Whitney Houston, a Michael Jackson, they're born as little kids, entertainers. Right, 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 Once they right. find it, it is the source and the strength of their wealth building asset. And what every person needs to do, but as, as Dr. Paul said, it's going back to the creator to find out what was actually put in us. My mom used to tell me as a little bitty uh, kindergarten teenager, right. she said, boy, you sure got the gift of gas. <laughs> And here I am, 30 years later. Exactly. This is what is my greatest <laughs> asset. Yes. And I simply just walk freely in that. And all kind of avenues and doors now open for me to prosper in my whole life right. from what God gave. I believe it's so difficult to try to be something you were never created to be. But if you would simply find, you can't be me, I can't be you, I yes. can't be uh, just how incredible uh, Dr. Paul is in business and this and that management. But we all have our proper gifts, so that's why I love coming together. Right. Because when we put it together, Ooh. it is an incredible move. Yes. I can't do what you all do here with media. I love it. Yes. But when we put all this together, it's going to be a beautiful symphony that yes. now God can use as a stream to birth a wealth-building asset. So it's trying to help people discover that. Right. If you haven't discovered it on your own from God, right, right, right. then sometime a coach, a mentor, someone who can assist right. you know, you to discover that and immediately that's when that asset breaks out. Right. Now, would you say, and this may be a little bit redundant, but would you say, because you know, Paul says we, we talk about imitating, right? Yes. Or to emulate someone. Mm -hmm. So like you said, I'm not you, you not me, I'm not him, and I'm not you. So is a good place to start, right? If you see someone that has what it is that you desire, not in an envious way, is it not all right to emulate that until you can make it your own? Would you say that? Yes, the, the approach really, I'd suggest it this way, is like when you're riding a bike, you know, somebody trains you on how to ride it till you get to your own rhythm. But often it's not just to see what somebody has in them right. that you want, but more to see somebody what has in them the what you have right 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 right. so for example there's things in in bishop that there is a small version of it and i'm like hold on that's the same kind of and you're able to connect with that yeah. and help to bring it out of you see so that's on the personal mentoring side but one of the first principles of building your wealth is that knowledge and education that that mm -hmm. development and you need that both formally yes go to school <laughs> But you also get it informally mm -hmm. through these connections, through yes. this mentoring, through Absolutely. through learning. And so, yeah, I would say I learned a lot from watching people. Mm -hmm. And I learned a lot more from interacting with people mm -hmm. and getting the download from people. The same way people can't download from us now. Right, 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 right. You do it also on a personal level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You invite somebody to lunch and ask them, hey, can we have a conversation? Yeah. You have a list of questions pre-prepared. So when you actually meet them, it's a fruitful time. Yes. You don't waste people's time. Because most people, and tell me this is the truth, that are have achieved any measure of success or mm -hmm. sense of growth mm -hmm. are usually very willing to pass it on. Absolutely. But it takes 
for those who are seeking it, a certain intentionality, mm -hmm. a certain grace to ask properly, right. to follow it up properly, and then don't waste a person's time. And I'll just add to that. Yeah. Not just have God just set our heart to where we become friends. We love each other as brothers, family, friends. But what I really love is how much I learned from him. Bishop is my bishop. It's my bishop. It has been a pleasure my bishop having you. you. <laughs> he was possessed to get out of no, no, no. I think he was my bishop first. We, we can talk about that off air. He was my bishop first. But listen, until next week, this has been another episode to the Thrive 360 podcast.